We're at a pivotal time in human history. Science is in the process of proving that there is a single matrix within which all things are affected by all other things. There are hypotheses that what is called quantum entanglement is not just for the smallest of the small, but that it is a central feature to all the physical world. Let's sit with that for a second. A butterfly flaps its wings and a volcano erupts on the opposite side of the planet. A fly is caught in a spider's web and half a world away, a quarter mile of glacier calves into the sea. A wolf howls in Alaska and a geyser erupts in Borneo. These images convey the oneness of a whole system, a system with an infinite number of moving parts, yet each part holographically existing as part of each other part. Science experiments have been underway to verify that what we used to think of as mechanistic, unconnected, random events are in fact very much connected. And we, as points of conscious awareness, have the ability, as do all living things, to tune in and experience any and all of it. After working for a while with these concepts, it's certainly not a stretch to see the world as a sentient being, reacting to and reflecting back to us our own intentions, feelings, and desires. It is only our choices, decisions, judgments, and conclusions that make life seem so distant, so disconnected from us, and so completely reliant on the application of our personal energies for anything to change. Of course, the universe is nothing but change. Each quantum bit, subatomic particle wave, atom and molecule has a purpose, an intelligence that is moving to our beck and call should we desire it. As psychologically complicated as we like to think we are, we are experts at making life a problem, a hellhole of pain and suffering, where nothing goes the way we want it to, and misery is the overarching theme of this god-awful cesspool of life. With each new tragedy and drama, further proof is set forth about the truth of all this. We are simply excellent victims. It's so much easier that way. You can avoid responsibility for creating anything and then wallow in sumptuous self-pity until the cows come home and they tragically never do. The point I want to get to is that we are not islands. We are not separate points of light scattered across the void. The void is very much an ocean of connectivity, communion, and consciousness. Our very atomic structure is intermingled with that of exploding stars, whirling galaxies, and all the sentience that created it. It becomes nearly impossible to feel alone if you embrace these concepts. In fact, do this thought experiment. Close your eyes. Now, in your imagination, imagine another being is sitting next to you. It could be somebody you know or not, and they don't have to be human. Now, ask this being some questions, such as, What's your name? Where do you live? Do you know who I am? What is your main talent? What do you see that I'm really good at? Shortly, you'll realize that you've been having a conversation with this imaginary friend and notice that you didn't know the answers to the questions you were asking them. They knew the answers. This being exists. You've probably heard about people having guides or angels that show up at crucial moments in a person's life to help make a pivotal decision or bring about a revelation. Well, this is how you can find out your own guides. Just imagine them beside you and begin to have a relationship with them. There have been theories tossed around that the imagination is really a sort of clearinghouse where our desires meet the sentience of the physical world. That sentience is constantly engaged in partnering with you to construct your life based on your desires, conclusions, and judgments. I tend to agree, and this has been posited by some scientists, that the sentience of the physical world is amoral. That is, it has no judgment as to what is right or wrong. It's humans that are excellent at doing that, and we do it almost automatically. Why? Well, make a story. To show ourselves how good or bad we are and thus create a matrix for games and adventures either sorrowful or exciting. So choose to embrace this oneness of life. Reach out for it. Interact with it. Experience its deep sentience and observe it responding and reacting to your intentions and desires. 
Soon you will discover the perfect partner you never thought you had, the most intimate confidant, the most empowering coach and deeply loving lover. And all it has ever taken, all it ever takes, is making that choice. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy Rx. www.pureenergyrx.com.